Welcome to the Modern Husbands podcast, where any combination of Dr. Ross, Christian, and Brian host national experts who share winning ideas to manage money and the home as a team. Join your fellow Modern Husbands and have links to our podcasts, articles, and other resources to manage money and the home as a team sent to your inbox every couple of weeks by subscribing to our newsletter at modernhusbands.com. Today's guest is Lori Israel. Lori is a national prenuptial agreement mediator, consultant, lawyer, and author of The Generous Prenup, How to Support Your Marriage and Avoid the Pitfalls. For today's show, we will discuss when prenups are appropriate, when they're not, and the damage they can cause. Enjoy today's show. <laughs> Lori, thanks for joining us today. Really glad to be here. What? We're excited. This is such a, a unique space where you're an expert, um, both as an attorney for, for scores of years, like lots of lots of really important wisdom to share with folks um, about prenups, because uh, there aren't a lot of people who really understand prenups and uh, when you should get one, should you get one, how should they be written? Uh, but it's, it's certainly an important topic. So we want to make sure that our listeners um, are aware from somebody who who's an expert in the field and, and who's written a great book, uh, The Generous uh, Prenup, uh, to be able to share what um, advice that you have uh, for folks who are in those facing that decision. Mm-hmm. Like, let's start out with uh, just something simple with who should get a prenup? Like, what are some factual situations where it makes sense to get a prenup? Yeah. Yeah. Um... One of the things that's happening now is there's lots of media interest in prenups and there's lots of media sites that say everybody should get a prenup. And to me, my my view is that a prenup is a last resort. A prenup only should be used where it's really needed. And then it's so important that the process of getting one is good and fair and the result is fair. And that often in a traditional kinds of negotiation doesn't happen. So my view is that most people don't need prenups um, because uh, marriage is a state that involves sharing and prenups basically involve not sharing. Um, And especially first marriages with no kids from previous marriages at relatively young ages, even if there's a different amount of assets accumulated or a different amount of income earned, I think that prenups are a really big mistake for for that sort of um so that sort of population um and prenups are very rare they still are very rare Um, when you say rare how rare what percent of marriage um, i think that you know if you take everybody who's married um including you know all all economic classes groups probably less than one percent okay if you take um people that are that are professionals that are young professionals maybe a few percent five percent if you take people, and I'm just guessing from this, I have some statistics that were that I tried to find in the book, but they're, it's extremely rare still. Probably among second marriages, you're, if you look at all the second marriages of like 50, 60 year olds, um, a lot of them don't need prenups because they just have enough money to survive. So that, mm-hmm. so if you took, look at the whole group, maybe 5%. If you look at the group that has money and has children, Maybe it it goes up to twenty percent with that group. So that's mm. that's a that's a that's a fact pattern, as we call it in in law, where people could think it, well think about a prenup uh, later in life marriages with kids. If you want to leave money for your kids, you want to support your spouse to the needs of the spouse also as you age. A prenup is a good thing to have at that for that. And there's other. There's other examples where people need prenups and need to have prenups or are forced into having prenups. For instance, um, a, a good proportion of my clients are one of them is a child of family, parental or generational wealth. And there's a whole bunch of trusts that they are beneficiary of. And mm-hmm. that needs to be analyzed and brought, you know, brought into the discussion. Um, and in those cases, usually the parents, unfortunately, um, really want the child to have a prenup, um, whereas uh, in general, those trusts really do protect the trust assets. Um, so I think a prenup, for me, a prenup is a last resort. I, I always am happy when I talk myself out of a job. I feel like I'm doing my job. So who then should not get a prenup? Uh, first marriages, uh, rel- relatively young people, um, 
even if there's a different amount of assets saved, um, even if there's debt, one of them has debt, let's say one of them has student debt, the other one doesn't, it's probably because the student loan person had to put themselves to the college and the other one's parents help them. You know, it, it doesn't, I think debt isn't the reason to have one. And there's a lot of uh, internet stuff out there that's saying that's the most important reason. Um, people that, even if they have different incomes, because marriage is sharing and, um, you know, the, people's, all, all the, the law of marriage and the law of divorce all sifts out all these factors that marriage is a partnership and you bring different things to the partnership. Somebody might make more money. Somebody might do other things more. Uh, somebody may, might make a whole lot of money. The other person might be a school teacher and provides social benefit. So most young marriages, if possible, no. With mm -hmm. the first marriages without children. So you're right. There's there's been a lot of like media discussion about this, and I mean I think that's that's interesting that you say that because there's a lot of people that say, well, if you, one partner is coming in with a lot of assets, even if you're young, you should get a prenup then automatically. Like, like yeah. the, the well, media the, message is right, and the course. media is wrong. The, the media is <laughs> wrong about that because the divorce law takes care of that. You know, if, if you come in with a lot of assets. The idea in every state, one of the things I did, and I'm, I'm a Massachusetts lawyer, and I know Massachusetts divorce law and practiced it for many years. And um, But in every state, the idea is that the marriage partnership begins at marriage and you're building up a marital estate that you share. Mm -hmm. And usually the sharing is 50-50. Sometimes it might not be 50-50. And usually in practically every state, the ideal, the idea is that premarital property is separate unless you blend it into the marriage, and or unless you have so much, so little marital property developed that it doesn't provide one of the spouses enough security based on the the, the, the years of the marriage and the facts of the, where they're at at the time of divorce. So it is taken into account, and usually it's protected adequately, somewhat, as it needs to be. So no, I just think, I think it's hyped um, that <laughs> people need, need a, uh, a prenup. And I think, you know, I'm sorry to be a little cynical about other people, but I think it's it's a marketing tool for people. And hmm. um, and also the idea that debt... For you, other you, lawyers, it's a marketing For other lawyers and financial planners and, um, and uh, you know, have the websites that promise prenups where you, um, where you do it online, which I think is a huge mistake. Hmm. Um, because you know, I, one of the things I do is I don't even give people a information sheet to fill out before I talk to them for the first time, because you can really miss important things. You can skim over. You have to really talk to a person to find out. And I find out everything. I bet find out about families of origin, money, as far as they know, you know, inheritances, trusts, um, divorce, divorces among family of origin, all that. And, and there are some good reasons to have a prenup too. Like some of the, the a certain proportion of my clients have a prenup because their divorce was so horrible and so unfair. And they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to get joint custody of their kids. You know, just, just awful litigation. And one of the good things prenups do when I do a prenup or when I do a term sheet for a prenup, which I do in other states when I'm working with people in other states, is I have an alternative dispute resolution provision in the term sheet that's, that has a pecking order, mediation, collaborative law, binding arbitration to the extent possible, then non-binding arbitration, and the very last choice which is going to court. And that usually doesn't have to happen, except where it possibly relates to the kids. But you know, you, you brought up an important point where you, you apologize and you shouldn't for being skeptical. And uh, if, if for our listeners, uh, that's not new. Uh, we we like skepticism. We we want them to question their financial planners and how they're making money on them. We we want people to question what websites they're going to and how is it the websites are making money? Is it through affiliate links, yeah. which means they're not unbiased, right? They're biased toward whoever's paying them. And so to to look at mm -hmm. it through that lens to understand yeah. that there's marketing websites who they're there, they exist to make money or there are lawyers who just simply need money and they're going to, through yeah. marketing efforts, try right. to tell you, you must have these prenups. Yeah. Right. I, that's that's the kind of healthy skepticism that we want yes. our listeners to be aware yeah. of. So we and, appreciate and I'm, I'm noticing now that 
I'm my my working in many states as a mediator and doing term sheets and consulting. I'm starting to have an impact on people's website. I'm starting to see like language from my website in their prenup part. And my prenup should be fair, not just you need a prenup to protect your assets and to make sure your divorce is you know good for you, but to to, to make something fair and to improve your marriage because prenups can improve marriage too, um, relieve a lot of stress. Are you engaged, recently married, or know someone who is? We are empowering engaged and recently married couples who want to manage money in the home as a team with a Transition to Marriage Toolkit. Learn more at modernhusbands.com. Now back to the show. Uh, the other thing that bothers me is that some of the most um, clicked on articles are from people that are really, really young and sometimes unmarried or never been married. Mm. Um, and I think that it really takes, I think that it's really important for people working with prenups to be, if not married, to be divorced after a significant length marriage of some to know what long-term marriage is about. Because prenups affect a long-term marriage. They're, people get married because they think they're going to be married for the rest of their lives. So they're projecting a long-term marriage. So when you have a 24-year-old or a 25-year-old who's never been married, um, give advice on prenups. Basically, they're giving advice on how to be married and how to have a long-term marriage. And it's totally absurd yeah, and it's dangerous. Al it's almost like uh, a 32-year-old, like, freshly married uh, guy, <laughs> you know, on a podcast, uh, you know, giving a, uh, unqualified advice to uh, other couples. <laughs> oh, who are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we have expert. Uh... <laughs> That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah. So aside from the sort of marketing uh, pitfalls uh, and, and drawbacks, as well as your your comment about um, prenups being the sort of last resort, what what are some other, I guess, drawbacks of prenups? Well, one of the, a really major drawback is the idea that somebody can withdraw rights and obligations and money. And security from somebody without without getting without giving something in return, um, and coming into marriage with a selfish attitude, which I want to protect myself, I want to have a lot of separate money, and then you have the problem with people hoarding their separate money. Mm. Like if if some part of the separate money, let's say dividends from a stock fund, is separate, and you take money out of that, it's your money, and you put it in for, for groceries. You're going to think about that money because if you kept it in your own account, it would be separate. But if you put it for groceries, you know, so it kind of changes your mindset about sharing. It also has, you know, I think marriage in order for, to be long term really takes total commitment on the side of both people. And that means commitment of time, um, wealth, money, attention, um, it, what, what you spend your activities at. Not that you have to do everything together, but it requires a really amount, a big amount of commitment, which which prenups detract from. Um, so, and they can be very unfair. And, and the process is so bad. That's how I got into this, because I had been you know, representing people getting into prenups. And the kind of unfairness and one-sidedness and take it or leave it kind of negotiating was awful. And I don't know how some of these people could have ever stayed married after that process. And then the result in the prenup is so bad that it has to cause co corrosion as time goes on, where one party is now has like 10, 20, 30 million dollars, and the other one, the marital property is like, you know, a few hundred thousand. And, you know, it just has to, has to have a bad effect on people's care, love for each other. Very serious things to the, oh. <laughs> to oh, the yeah. quality and the, you know, lasting satisfaction in a relationship. Yeah, it is. And sh sharing and being being there, caring for somebody. Um, consideration. And it's really interesting because consideration is a legal term, meaning that if I want Brian to do work for me, we have a little contract. I pay money and he does the work. In a prenup, that no, in general, no consideration, no legal consideration is possible. So, And it's even considered that before you marry, you don't have a fiduciary fiduciary duty of care, financial care for the other person, which is absurd. Some people who marry have been together for years, or even if they haven't, 
they care about the other person. They don't want to screw the other person financially. But prenup law usually lets them do that. And, you know, prenups Wait, don't have to be that way. This is an important point. Okay, so I, uh, so fiduciary responsibility for, for the listeners just simply means that, um, that, broadly speaking, legally, you are bound to do a certain thing. Uh, so can you can you break that down into lay terms? Because that yeah. that's important. You you just said right. that. Yeah, please, please explain well, that. It's also sometimes called the duty of care. It's the duty of financial care. When you have a fiduciary relationship with somebody and you have a fiduciary duty, um, like a trustee of a trust, you you have a duty and, and people after they're married, you have a duty to, to care for them financially and to do everything in their best interest, not your best interest. That's what the fiduciary duty is. And if that's waived, you know, then you, a prenup, a lot of prenup negotiations, you're doing something in your best interest. The other party knows it. It's so obvious and it's allowed. And so. So, so in other words, uh, legally speaking, um, just the, the understanding is that the partners, the spouses are supposed to be looking out for each other's best interest. Once they're married. When, once they're married. Yes. Legally speaking, which yes. you know, obviously makes makes total sense. Right. Um, however, a prenup can take that away. A prenup can position spouses to actually legally work against each other's best financial interest. That's right. That's right. And it's terrible. And that's that's why that's what why I got into this. And when I am involved in a prenup, either as a consultant or a mediator, which I do in other states, or in Massachusetts as a representative attorney. I try to make it so that there is a fiduciary duty and caring on the part of each of the spouses, and they really think about what they're doing and think about the effects long term and the effects on the marriage. That, that, because I when you care about somebody, you don't so, want to hurt them. You're so, so prenups passionate. Are very, it, I know. It, 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 take, people. it takes out the, the teamwork. It could. I, yeah. I don't want to, to generalize. That's unfair yeah. because there are circumstances, as you're going to share in a little bit, where right. a prenup date does make sense. But yes. generally speaking, I can see how that would take that spirit of teamwork and partnership yes. out of a marriage, yeah. which is at, certainly right. contrary to what we're trying to accomplish here at Modern yeah. Husbands. And also the joint venture, the, the mm -hmm. risk of gain and loss, which makes the marriage more exciting because if everything is all cut and dry, but then there's like you you lose that too, you know. I like so the excitement of gain good. a little bit more than <laughs> yeah, the, law. yeah. It, that's really good. But you know, actually, the it's the down things. All marriages go through down things with each other or with th their circumstances, and it's the down the down parts that actually make the marriage stronger. I think if it survives. So, if a couple was to go through the process of getting a prenup, I guess, what's the best process to embark on in getting one? Well, if you're going to go forward with getting there's one. There's an absolute best process for most people. And that is to, to do it, find a lawyer mediator who's, who's proficient in divorce law and estate planning and do, create a term sheet through mediation with one, with the three of you meeting, get all the, the mediator gets all the financial information they discuss things. If there's very often, there's one financially, um, one more moneyed spouse and one less moneyed spouse, and to try to have the less moneyed spouse be able to talk about their thoughts and feelings, and the more moneyed spouse talk about their thoughts and feelings, and to try to come up with a term sheet that really feels good to both sides, and then you then refer them to lawyers. And I usually select the lawyers in, in whatever state I'm working with. And I usually select them with the collaborative law, collaborative divorce law, who I think are the most sensitive um, to, to the, the dynamics of marriage. And then, um, you know, have the, them write it up based on the term sheet that you've worked out with the clients and the attorneys will give them their, um, their counsel also. So nice. mediation, I think, is the best way. So mediation first, and then you refer them to lawyers, and you said lawyers, plural, so do they each have their own they lawyer? Each, yeah, for a prenup, they each need to have their own lawyer. I mean, you don't have to, but it makes it um, more enforceable, more better, better, more solid. Because and, if you have a prenup, you want it to be a solid prenup. 
And for our listeners, what's the reason behind each having their own lawyer then after? Well, well, it's one person can't, one lawyer can't represent two people because there's a possible conflict of interest between their, their, the two people, between their interests. So legally, a lawyer, one lawyer can't represent two people in a divorce. A mediator is not, even though they're a lawyer, they're not functioning as a lawyer, they're functioning as a facilitator with knowledge that they can share, with information that they can share, and with a knowledge of divorce law and law about death, um, probate law, so that they can inform people as to deciding things. Because if you decide things, so the, 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 um, you know, the, there's, there's also the issue about um, death, because a lot of prenups, and when I started working in this field, the prenups didn't say anything about what happens when you die, but people can change their wills the day before they die. And so have, not having some sort of framework, even if it gets changed later, to have a certain guaranteed floor of inheritance, if that's appropriate, for the prenup is, is really important too to think about what happens at that point. What are the yeah. what are the pitfalls in the in the mediation process that folks should be aware of? Um, it's uh, often I might get some uh, a case where two people went to two different lawyers and it was a terrible terrible experience for them. Very often they broke up or almost broke up and got back together. And oh, wow. so mediation is a healing process. But when people have been through that, sometimes the mediation doesn't come to fruition. Usually the mediation does work and comes to fruition and is able to address um, any sorts of um, uh, conflicts or um, that they couldn't decide um, by themselves or with attorneys. Um, but um, I don't. there really are not any downsides, as far as I can see, really significance. The downside is starting with the lawyer process first. Got it. And the like, downside is picking lawyers, that, and there, most of them are out there that look at it as a asset protection exercise and not a how do we make this marriage work ex- exercise. So mm-hmm. if it's asset protection, it's only looking for your client to try to get them as much as possible, rather trying to figure out what's fair and how to have each client give and receive in the process. And there are attorneys out there that that do view marriage and really think about the marriage, the health of the marriage when they're doing prenups. I can I can now recognize for the first time uh, how how dangerous a prenup can be um, under the wrong cir- under under certain circumstances. Like yeah. thinking through an attorney who is rightfully, if they're hired to do this, to hired to only protect the assets of the person that they're representing, how that works directly against the spirit of cooperation and teamwork yeah. from somebody yeah. who's a legal authority and who's going to certainly know a heck of a lot more than the lay person. If the other person, if the other, uh, you know, engaged the fiance, the mm-hmm. spouse, the future spouse, whatever, if they don't have an attorney, I mean, you, you almost think I, 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 my first reaction is, wow, if, if somebody wanted to get a prenup, if my future spouse wanted to get a prenup and I still wanted to marry him, I feel like I would need to get an attorney to kind of protect me. Oh, um, oh yeah. That, that doesn't seem very, yeah. very helpful. Oh, it's awful. It's just awful. Um, yeah. And, and it's really hard for people to broach that when they want a prenup. Like I have people that say I'm dating somebody. I, I, they contact me. I'm dating somebody and I have to, I have to bring it up because I have a family business. It's been going on for 30 years and I'm involved in it. And yeah, that's one of the reasons you, you would have it. Right. Prenup. Right. But now, how do I approach that? And then a lot of people that are the more money person approach it because they don't want to hurt their future spouse. They love them. And, you know, what can, what can I do to make this right? Um, mm. So a lot of people that hire me are the, are the people with more money that want to do it this way because they don't want to hurt the person they love. Well, thank you for lifting the spirits of the conversation. I feel a lot better about humanity after that. <laughs> <laughs> And often I've been calling it, a, a, instead of a prenup, a financial plan for your marriage. Mm, I like that. I love that. Actually. Which is nicer. Yes. And that's really what it is. Did you know that the budgeting app Mint is going away at the end of 2023? This is Brian Page, founder of Modern Husbands. My wife and I used to use Mint, but found something better. Fortunately, before we learned of this news. What we found is safer, has more customizable tools, 
and it's been easier for us to use to review our day-to-day -day finances during our money dates. Go to modernhusbands.com to learn about Tiller and how we use it. We are partnering with Tiller to create tutorials and resources just for couples who use Tiller. Once again, go to modernhusbands.com to learn about Tiller, and while you're there, be sure to join fellow Modern Husbands as bi-monthly newsletter subscribers and receive great ideas to manage money and the home as a team and a few free gifts when you subscribe. Now back to the show. So aside from picking an attorney, Lori Israel Esquire, what, what are some characteristics of, you know, great mediators and attorneys in this space? How do you, how do you go about uh, Well, what, what, what I would describe in my book and what I do is uh, I pick attorneys that I usually pick collaborative divorce attorneys. Okay. And usually most of them are mediators too. Mm -hmm. Collaborative divorce is a kind of divorce bar. It's, it's all over the country, but it's not known that much. And what they do is they have a series of, you have your client that you represent, and there's a series of four-way meetings with the other attorney, the other client, where you hash things out. Usually there's a neutral process coach who's a psychologist or something like that, a counselor, and they make sure, they're at the meetings too, and they make sure that the lawyers don't get bullying, you know, start bullying or whatever lawyers do, and that the clients the, the clients are, are productive and not emotional, not reflecting anger and stuff like that. So, so there's a series of meetings, and, and then there's the private meetings you have with your client. And at the end of it, it's, it, that there's basically a term sheet that gets written up as a prenup. It's called collaborative divorce. And I, I think that these are the people most prepared to do good prenuptial agreement mediation. Most of them are mediators also. So when I look for somebody, I really just look in the collaborative bar. If you look at a website and you see that person does a lot of litigation and doesn't have any mediation or collaborative law, a lot of divorce litigation, that's usually not the kind of person you'd want to do this. What, what are some provisions of bad prenups and what are some provisions in, in good or helpful prenups? Okay. The, the worst provision, and one I've seen really recently, is that all earned money is kept with the person that earns it. Ooh. All earned income, and that it's surprisingly often. So all you through the marriage, all yep. earned money. Yeah. Yep. So there's there's oh, absolutely wow. no consideration for the amount of labor that went into keeping the house running. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's really terrible. Yep. Oh, wow. People actually put that. That's in astonishing. The I know. And another one is like um, at death, um, I get to do whatever I want to do. I don't have to guarantee anything, even if we've been married forty years or fifty years. Wait, that's say that again. Good. At death. At death, I don't have to guarantee my spouse anything. Whoa. Okay. Or if we with if we buy property, um, we don't have to have a house that is owned by both of us. I could own it myself with my separate money all through the marriage. Well, you're putting people in position, not you, but that prenup <laughs> puts people in a position of just a dangerous that, that that they would be completely exposed to abandonment. That that's oh, yeah. a pretty terrifying thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what... the other problem. Prenup it. it becomes an easy out of the marriage for the more moneyed spouse. Uh, so, so alternatively, the, the second part of Christian's question of like, so what's the, what are good or helpful provisions that should be included okay. in a prenup? Uh, one helpful provision is to have at least a floor of an inheritance, like at least 50% of my estate to, to you, to each other. Um, an alternative dispute resolution provision to keep you out of court is great. Hmm. Yeah. Um, because usually what happens in a prenup is usually they are enforceable, but there might be some questions about it that need to be resolved in, the, in a court. Um, and usually the more moneyed person is in control because the other person doesn't have enough money to pay for legal fees. And this, this gives us a way to keep it out of court. It's more cost effective if it's in, the, in arbitration. So arbitration really can work. Um uh, an idea of sharing or, or, or of accumulating a way of accumulating marital assets, and that's needed for most marriages. When you have later in life marriages where both parties have accumulated enough money to retire, sometimes I have prenups where they both are retired, um, or one of them is. You know, that's not a there's not a problem in accumulating marital assets, but marital assets is, in most marriages is really important. So 
ways of accumulating marital assets. A good provision, if somebody has a lot of separate property, is to have the income from the separate property blend into the marital property and even the the principle of the separate property during the time of the marriage, like maybe 20 years or something, vest into marital property. So you don't have that separate separateness and there's enough money for both people, more than enough money, hopefully. Um, those are some good provisions to have. Mm. No, those are good provisions. Um, so that's on the good side. You mentioned there's a lot of bad prenups and especially with celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we hear this all the time in the media, but does a prenup have to be fair? It doesn't. That's the problem. It That's doesn't have problem. to be fair. I mean, it has to be. Most states say that at the time it's entered into, it has to be not unconscionable. And unconscionable, what does that, mean? that means it would shock the, content, content, con the, the conscience of anybody mm -hmm. trying to get somebody to, to sign it and no reasonable person would sign such a thing. Boy, that that is it's a vague. very high standard. <laughs> and that I if there people certainly have different con different levels of being conscious toward the health and well being of others. Yeah. So who's conscience? Yeah, are right. We and that's about? usually decided by state law. It would and it would be decided in a huge lawsuit after the prenup after either somebody dies or somebody or there's a divorce when it comes into effect. And so that's a huge lawsuit to decide that. So, so you mentioned that there could be a huge lawsuit at the end, but what other things happen to a marriage when there is a bad prenup? Usually people get divorced because it's a bad prenup. Wow. Hmm. That, is, uh, that is important for our listeners to understand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's a not a good way to start. It could be uh, a prenup that in the eyes of an attorney hired to protect the assets of that individual. Is enforceable. Are, is enforceable. And yeah. in, in, in their eyes, it's good. Well, no, in their eyes, it's enforceable. They don't They don't reach. It's good for their client. Good for their client, yes. But it isn't really good for the client. Not necessarily client good for the couple. Because it's not good for the marriage. Yeah. Right, right. Now, as... As we wrap up here, we, we like to make sure that our listeners walk away with something that is simply understood, actionable. Uh, what would that be for you? What wisdom do you want to provide for our listeners that they can walk away with just understanding and being able okay. to explain to others? Yeah, I, I think people should be really suspicious of the idea that in a first marriage with not great amount of assets and you know and not no kids just a first marriage with, with 20s or 30s that there should be a prenup they should be very wary of anything on the internet that says they should be they should really think about it because it, they probably shouldn't be well the the time here today has been treasured by us mm -hmm. uh, the the i had no idea that the that a prenup could be so dangerous toward a marriage and uh, could evolve into the opposite of teamwork and partnership. Yeah. And uh, as, as you mentioned, there are good reasons for prenups and we want to mm -hmm. make sure that our listeners are aware yes. of that. There are circumstances, but in most circumstances, uh, they don't make sense and that we always need to be suspicious of who is trying to convince us to get a prenup. Mm -hmm. So thank, thank you so much for your yeah, time. Thank you. Lori. Thank you, Lori. Please go to LoriIsrael.com to learn more about her work and purchase her book, The Generous Prenup. Don't forget to click subscribe wherever you download your podcast, give us a rating, and share the Modern Husbands podcast with others. Doing so goes a long way in growing our reach. And join your fellow Modern Husbands and have links to our podcasts, articles, and other resources to manage money and the home as a team sent to your inbox every couple of weeks by subscribing to our newsletter at modernhusbands.com. Until next time, be well.